Hey guys, Eric here, and welcome back to the OG Studio, where we cover all things art. In today's video, we're going to be going over dry brushing. I have these 3D printed statues that I'm working on, and we're getting around to doing the bases. Uh, so for the base, here's an example. It's basically a slab of concrete. I want to make it look kind of like, um, more like a, a pavement on the street. So what I did is I already primed it. I went over it with a, a darker gray color kind of to give it like that pavement color. But we're going to be dry brushing it to kind of bring out all the rocks and the texture. So basically what is dry brushing? Dry brushing is taking a dry brush, putting a little bit of paint on it, rubbing it off onto a towel, and then slightly, uh, lightly coating the top surfaces of a texture to where it only highlights the top levels of the surface. Everything underneath that's like deep in the cracks will stay nice and dark and everything above that will be nice and bright. Uh, it'll get hit with that lighter color gray that we're going to use. Uh, after that, I'm working on these Ninja Turtles that I 3D printed. If you want to see more on that, please subscribe to the channel. I have a whole series of videos on how I'm painting those, how I'm printing them, and basically everything involved with that project. But uh, in today's video, like I said, yeah, we're going to be just doing dry brushing and do a little dry brushing tutorial. Uh, so yeah, we have this slab of concrete that we want to make it look like pavement. Like I said, I already went over and hit it with a darker gray with the airbrush gun. So it's nice and one solid color gray. We're going to take uh, a lighter color gray. I don't want this to be too dramatic. I just want to make the rocks and uh, the textures pop a little bit more. So we're going to hit it with just a, a slightly lighter gray color. And then also at the end, we're going to do a mud effect uh, because the turtles are all very muddy and beat up. It's more of like a darker theme where they're like uh, just been through, you know, hell, been through war. Uh, and that's what I want to bring off onto the base to make the base look all like it's a, like a, basically like a battle zone. All right. So yeah, with dry brushing, uh, you want to grab your brush for this case. I'm using this big, uh, it's almost, it looks like a giant makeup brush. It's very soft on the bristles. It's a cheap brush. I recommend when you're doing dry brushing, grab a, a cheap set of brushes. I'll have links in the description to where you can pick up brushes off of Amazon if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, because you're doing so, so much uh, back and forth and you're really going hard on the bristles, you don't want to use a good brush for this. Uh, you don't, you know, save and protect your good brushes for, you know, when you're doing finer details and, you know, working on, you know, something that uh, needs that attention. But for when we're going in and just hitting something very hard, pick up a cheap brush, save the money. It doesn't make a difference. Actually, the more beat up the brush is, the better the effect. All right, so let's go in and take a close look and see what we got. Okay, so we have four uh, of these bases to work on. Uh, I took my dark gray color and I added a little bit of white to it to make a lighter gray, and that's what we're going to use to brush on the uh, brush effect to bring out the highlights of each base. Uh, as far as the brush goes, it doesn't really matter what type of brush you use. So looking at our base, you can see we have a very fine little texture details across the top. Uh, the bottom doesn't matter so much because the bottom will be covered by a nameplate and we have very fine textures going across the side that we're going to highlight. So we'll get some of the paint on the tip of our brush and then the idea is that you want to wipe it off onto a paper towel until you barely see any more paint on the brush. Uh, the more paint that you see on the paper towel, the more that's going to end up on what you're painting. So you can go for different effects if you want to put a little bit more on at first, or you can brush on very little. And you're just going to give it a nice light sweeping motion like you're scratching the top of the surface. And as you can see, uh, that the rock textures are being picked up and highlighted by the lighter gray color. And you're just going to go around and pull the paint in different directions and work it around, picking up all the top levels of the surface to highlight them. So 
So now we'll hit the sides and as you can see, it's uh, really picking up the lighter color of the gray very nicely. So we'll just go and work our way around the base and get it all done. I'm going to go around and work on this for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so this is looking good and I'm happy with the way it's turning out. Uh, if you're working on your project and you're not happy with the look, just remember you can always go back to the original darker color and use the same effect where you brush it back on over the top layer uh, just to get rid of any areas that maybe you thought you put on too much or that you're just not liking the way it looks. So you would be basically erasing what you've already done. Okay, so let's move on to the next base. Uh, with this base, there's not a ton of texture on the top, but there is a ton of texture uh, along the sides. But the top does have a lot of rocks on it, and I really want to hit those rocks to make them pop. So we'll be doing the same thing with a uh, dry brush effect along the top and along the sides. Same thing, get your brush, make sure that it's still dry, uh, and just get a little bit of paint on the tip and wipe it off onto a paper towel to remove most of the paint. And then you can begin your sweeping motion across uh, the project you're working on to bring out the highlights. So in this case, we're going to hit the, the large rocks first. And then work our way around to the smaller rocks. I'm also lightly brushing the top of the base area where there's not so much texture, just to give it a, a more unified look. And across the flat surfaces, I'm going to do a circle sweep motion to kind of give it a um, weathered and uh, scratchy feel to it, since there isn't much texture on the, the flat areas. And so far, it's looking good. Just remember to start lightly because you can always add more at the end. So once again, we'll go back in and hit the top layer of the surfaces again. So once again, I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my brush and I'm going to go back in this time a little bit more darker and hit all the top areas of those uh, rocks that we see. And again, do a little bit of a sweeping motion across the flat areas to give it a scratchy surface look. So as mentioned, I have four of these bases to work on. Uh, to keep this video short and not take up too much time, I'm going to work on some of these bases off camera and then I'll come right back. Okay, so here's the end result for this base. Uh, so far it is looking good. Uh, like I mentioned before, you can always go back in and add more. And we still need to go back in and add all the brown dirt effects onto all the bases at the end. So when going back now to add on the mud effect, it's going to be the same process. Uh, this time we're just using a brown color. Uh, but we're not going to do the entire base. I'm just going to go in certain areas to where I feel I want it to look muddy. Uh, mainly where the Ninja Turtles are going to be placed, where their hands are, where their feet are, or if their knees are touching the ground. Uh, that's where I'm going to go in and just hit it with some uh, dirt effect to make it look like mud. And here's a quick look at all four bases with uh, the dry brushing effect of the lighter gray to bring out the rocks, as well as the dry brushing effect with the brown color to bring out uh, the look of it looking all muddy. And now a final look at the larger base. Uh, I let the paint dry for a few hours just so uh, 
we can bring out the true color because as mentioned acrylic paint uh, does get a little bit darker as it dries uh, so we're starting to see what it's actually going to look like once this dries completely All right, so it's the next day, and here is the final result. I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. It turned out awesome. The mud effect looks great. Uh, it's going to look really great with uh, the figures on top. So, as mentioned, the mud effect, it did dry darker. That's why I recommend it. Don't, like, freak out when you first put it on. It looks too bright because with acrylic paints, they dry darker the next day, even over the next few days. It just gets a little bit darker. Especially once you hit it with a clear coat, it really just brings it all together. And I'll do another tutorial on that in another video about clear coating. But uh, yeah, for now, the mud effect looks great. The uh, the gray dry brushing looks great. Really makes all the rocks pop. I did take the original light gray color that I originally used for dry brushing. And I did go over the mud brown tones just a little bit because I felt like they were a little bit too bright. Not that I didn't like it. I, I felt like it, it was fine. I didn't like it once I put the, I'm working on the Ninja Turtles. I didn't like it once I put the Ninja Turtle figures on it. I felt like it distracted from them. Uh, I want the base to be simple. I don't want the base to stand out and overpower the figures on top. So that's why I went back in with the gray and just toned down the browns just a little bit so they weren't so, so bright. Also, I did go back in with another brown color. I went in with uh, a burnt umber because, uh, you know, mud is just not one color. So I went in with the uh, the more beige brown at first because that could be like more of like a dry type mud. And then I went back in certain spots with the, uh, the burnt umber, which is more like a, a clay color. You know, mud is, you know, different depths of uh, the ground. You have different colors of... Uh, mud basically so I went in with the burnt umber just to give it like more of like a clay effect like the like the mud's a little bit more wet looking uh yeah and it turned out really great I'm gonna give you guys some up close shots of this if you guys have any tips and tricks on how you dry brush mud or just rocks in general please leave a comment I always love reading the comments uh or if you have any questions I try to answer as many questions as possible in the comments uh, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. We truly appreciate it. It helps promote the video. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you're notified of all future videos. Again, guys, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you on the next project.